Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wookie, and I'm finally back for another Fate Grand Order video. What are we going to be talking about today? Well, considering today is, by the time this releases, the 11th, and tomorrow is the 12th, it means Charlemagne is coming! So today we're going to be talking about the banner that is uh, going to be releasing with him. Uh, I should say, it's technically Trom that is coming, and then Trom features a Charlemagne banner <laughs> to go with it. Uh, so we're gonna be talking about that banner and the units that go in it. So let's get right into it. Uh, first off, you can see here, this says June 1st. That's because this is the JP version. And JP, he showed up on June 1st, but obviously for us, that's not happening. It's happening on May 12th. <laughs> and what's gonna be on the banner is Charlemagne, Kremeld, and Roland. And then there will also be Craft Essences on these banners, but they're not on rate up. It just means that they're adding them to the general pool. Uh, there's Average One, Projection Loading, Transmutation Magecraft, and Yearning for Secession, and the Unwithering Flower. I'm pretty sure they're at, they're at just adding it. Yes, they are. Okay. I had to be double sure that they weren't limited or something silly like that. So, let's go into the units. So we're going to start with Roland, because he is very likely the one that um, is is not limited. So, he's probably the one the people are going for probably least. But anyway, that's this is Roland. He is a saber, one quick, two arts, two buster. His active skills are adamantine, adamantine body, A, grants self invincibility for one turn, increases zone defense for one turn, charges on MP gauge, and then defense up uh, 100% and NP up 20% at its cooldown 6. And then his second skill is Bitter Tears from a Love of Love. C, increases own buster performance for three turns, removes own debuffs, 500% chance to reduce own charm resistance by 50% for three turns, and then remove all enemy buffs, and that's on a 30% buster increase on a cooldown of six. And his third skill is the Intentionally Tardy Oliphant EX, gains crit stars, increases own crit star absorption for one turn, charges own MP gauge by 10%, and then 500% chance to deal 500 damage to self without killing. It is 20 stars, 500 uh, absorption, 500% absorption on the cooldown of 3 at level 10. Uh, his two passive skills are Magic Resistance A and Writing A. His third append skill is an Anti-Rider Attack Damage Aptitude. And his double Phantasm is Durandel, the ultimate Unbroken Hollow. A plus rank Noble Phantasm Buster, hits 4 times. Ignores invincibility for one turn, deals damage to a single enemy. The MP up is 600% at level 1, and if you get him all the way to MP level 5, it's 1000. And then he increases his attack and critical damage for 3 turns, and this bo these both activate first. It's 20% attack up, and the crit damage is 20%, and that is Roland. Um... He yeah he seems he seems okay he has some fun stuff to work with I do like the uh, the three turn cooldown on this that means that with a single Koyanskaya you would be able to get um, forty crit stars in a turn which is very funny all at the price of like dealing of uh, one thousand damage to yourself which isn't too bad but in general three turn cooldowns is pretty nice it means you're going to be able to get this constantly. As long as you're able to actually heal your boy, because eventually he will just die. <laughs> well, not because he won't kill himself, but because of, uh, the enemy will be able to get that much closer to just finishing him off. This second skill seems pretty fun in a lore accurate kind of way. I do like that it uh, makes him... <laughs> it's funny because this, in the op this is actually very bad if you're ever fighting. It means that he can just basically never fight anyone who charms. Because he would be 100% charm lock. For example, Shudin in um, the Shimosa story, you would just never bring him <laughs> because he's just you use this. It's already like uh, it already feels like she has a 100% chance of charming the entire team every single turn. But with the, after that skill, you basically will be just 100% charm locked for three turns. Um, so you have to be careful not to use him in something like that. But it is very fitting to the lore of Roland, so I kind of like it for that reason alone. And Adamantine Body is interesting because there are enough units in the game that can remove invincibility or can pierce invincibility, but with the defense up, it is at least makes it so that he likely won't, he still won't take very much damage for that turn, which is pretty cool. The only problem is here is that this is all like really okay stuff that doesn't really stand out to me all that much at the moment. If I'm gonna be using a Buster Saber for a single target, I don't know, it just feels like I would use other options. Even, I honestly would even use some of the other AOE Buster dudes at that point. 
Um, yeah, I can't really think of any too many reasons why I'd want to kind of use Roland. It's not to say that anything he has is necessarily bad. It's just that nothing is also necessarily like so amazingly like good that I'd be like, oh yeah, let me just drop everything and use him now. Which is fitting, because I guess he isn't like a limited servant. He's someone who's always going to be there. So if you were able to somehow get him to NP5, you would get like a good burst of big damage from him. Plus, with this ability, if you were able to just constantly do it, like if you were able to loop once, do it again, do it again, you would, in theory, have at least 40% attack up and 40% crit damage ups, and that ain't bad. Um, but I don't know. It just feels like a very basic unit. It doesn't really seem like a unit that calls out to me all that much. <laughs> like, even in the things of, like, I would say, is like, oh yeah, that's all very, like, generic stuff, <laughs> I guess. I don't know. Um... But yeah, that's Roland. He seems perfectly fine to me. Seems like a very usable unit. Maybe not one that I would that really jumps out to me, but maybe it does to you. Who knows? Feel free to tell me if you're a big Roland fan and uh, what you plan to use him for. I would love to actually hear from people who love Roland and how they uh, use him and stuff. I very rarely get to hear about some some units. So when I actually do ask for people, I do get the dude who wanders in and goes like, "Oh yeah, I've been waiting for." three years for this dude let me tell you everything about him and it's always fascinating to read about it and be like okay i would never have imagined that that's cool anyway the other unit that's on this one who is actually kind of limited but because she is story locked which means she's limited with extra steps extra gatekeeping on it is krimhild uh she is a berserker one quick two arts two buster three hits on the quick three hits on the arts three hits on the buster and five hits on extra uh, active skills are first for the first skill is revenge plan rampaging B plus plus reduces all enemies MP gauge by one reduces their defense for three turns reduces their crits attack chance for three turns the defensive down is 20% the crit chance down is 20% on the cooldown of six the second skill is the recuperated slaughter a increases own uh, arts and buster performance for three turns then increase own damage against enemies with the chaotic element alignment for three turns 30% to Arts and Buster, and 50% to the Chaotic Damage on a cooldown of 6. And her third skill is the Affection of the Court Lady EX. 500% chance to draw attention to all of all enemies to one ally by 300% for one turn. Charges on MP gauge, recovers on HP, the MP up is 50%, and the heal is 3,000 on a cooldown of 6. That's... Passive skill is Madness Enhancement EX. And then her third skill is an anti say I didn't even need to see it. I already knew it was like, this is going to be whatever class Siegfried did, which is a uh, saber. Anti-saber critical attack chance resistance. Increase on critical attack chance resistance against saber enemies. And our noble phantasm is the Balmon Krimhild, the exiled demonic sword, the Holy Queen's for forfeiture. Rank A+, plus, hits four times, removes one enemy's debuff on hits uh i did, did i mention it was arts it's arts on four hits remove one enemy's defensive buffs activates first the defensive buffs are any of the following included anything that would make you do less damage and this includes the um anti-purge defense which is the f advanced version of invincibility and then deals damage to them and then if they are a dragon just a deal an additional 150 percent extra damage to them her damage at level 1 is 900%, and the damage at level 5 is 1,500, and then she also reduces their arts resistance for 3 turns. At charge level 1, it's 20%, and if you get her to the final charge level, it is 40%, and that is Krimhild. Uh, she... Well, uh, first of all, I'll, say, I'll give up the ghost and say right here, I was already going to summon for Krimhild, and I had no idea what she did other than she did 150% damage to dragons. And then after reading her, I'm like, wow, this is a really good-ass unit. <laughs> uh, really solid. The, the This third skill is amazing. The ability to just give, basically, taunt to an ally is pretty crazy. I remember someone saying there's not a lot of taunt CEs in the game anymore, because they kind of mess with the game when you can actually control what thing your opponent is going to attack for the certain turn. So being able to do that, especially on a Berserker, unless the enemy has AoE attacks, which there are some enemies that um, have AoE style attacks, uh, in which case this skill does nothing. But the enemies who only attack once, this ends up being an amazing skill because now you can always guarantee, like for example, you have someone up with Evade, you put them on the evade. Maybe you have someone with invincibility up. 
put him on there. You don't have to worry about it. It would be a pretty decent skill to start with, but then this also just charges our NP by 50%, which is really good. Especially because it depends really on a lot of like Berserkers, but I know Berserkers have a pretty bad MP gain uh, by default. Um, the only ones that really don't are Vlad, which I know Vlad does because he also increases his MP gain from one of his skills. Um, and I'm not 100% sure how Krimheld is, but I'm assuming that she'll be able to do perfectly fine just because she has two arts cards here, she has four hits on her Noble Phantasm, and she'll be getting a little bit of a boost from kept from a double Castoria team, so she should be fine. But either way, if she isn't fine, charging your own MP gauge by 50% uh, and then healing on top of it is really nice. Her first skill is also really nice because, again, it reduces all enemies' MP gauges by a single turn. Uh, makes them weaker, and then if they were to ever hit Krimhild, it's a lower chance of getting crit critted because it's a 20% da chance down to critical attack chance. Uh, I said that sentence terribly. It reduces their critical attack chance for three turns, which is very key because most Berserkers will die to a single crit hit. <laughs> they will get eviscerated off the face of the earth if they get hit by a crit. So it's a good thing that... It a lot of good Berserkers will have the ability to either, one, have Guts and re reduce that chance away from them, or they'll have um, some way to reduce the chances of them getting hit like that out of the sky. And yeah, and then if you're ever fighting against, this is also a very nice buff, if you're ever fighting against a Chaotic Dragon, I guess this would de you'd be dealing a lot of damage to him. Uh, the only thing I can actually mention here is that I'm not... In terms of dragons, we have plenty of dragons to fight. In terms of how many of those dragons are Chaotic, I would assume... A vast majority of those dragons would be chaotic. <laughs> I actually am I'm curious myself to wonder how many... Um... Alright, one moment. Oh, well. Trying to avoid any specific uh, character spoilers. Giant. Oh, wait. I just realized it's not possible to do that. So I'll hold off on it. But I do realize there are actual servants who have dragons and chaotic alignment to them. So this will work pretty good. So I think she ends up being a really, really solid unit. Uh, Berserker also means that she'll be able to fight basically any dragon of any kind of uh, type. I know when I was talking about Nikitch last time, she was a rider, so therefore you would want her to fight caster dragons, and who knows how many caster dragons you're ever going to find. Uh, not to say they don't exist, but they totally do. But when you're a Berserker, you just don't care. As long as they're not a foreigner, you can do pretty good damage to them and be fine with it. So I think she's a really good unit. And also the fact that she's story locked means she's also a very annoying unit to get. <laughs> so I would love to actually potentially get her. This is the main unit that I'm going to be trying for and hoping for. While most people are likely summoning for Charlie and trying to get Charlie, I'll be over there praying that I get able to, to win the 50-50 and get Krimhill. But anyway, that's her. I think she's really good. Next, Charlemagne. Or Charlie, depending on how you want to call him. Or Charles the Great, however you wish to uh, refer to Charlemagne. Charlemagne is a saber. He has two quicks, two arts, two bo oh, and two monsters. <laughs> that would be insane. Two quicks, two arts, one buster. Four hits on the quick cards, three hits on the arts, five hits on the buster, and five hit on extra. His first skill, which is going to be strengthened eventually, but for what it's going to be when it launches in the game, is going to be traveling of the path of the King C. Grants one ally's invincibility for two attacks, three turns. If self doesn't have invincibility, increase own MP generation rate for five turns. Grant self buff on defense buff for 5 turns. Grant self the heroic king buff for 5 turns when taking damage. Enables extra damage from Charlemagne's NP. It's if self has invincibility. Uh, and then 500% chance to seal out NP for 1 turn to merit. Uh, MP rate up is 20% on cooldown of 6. That is a... Uh, does this get... It does not get removed. Okay. Second skill is Emperor of Paladin's EX. Increases party's attack for 3 turns, increases own damage against demonic enemies for 3 turns, increases own defense against divinity enemies for 3 turns, and then charges own MP gauge. The attack up is 20%, the damage to demonic and divinity is 30%, and on MP increase is 30% on a cooldown of 6. His third skill is Mana Burst Light A, increases own quick performance for 3 turns, increases own crit damage for 3 turns, increases own crit damage against evil alignment enemies for 3 turns. Quick up is 30%, crit damage is 30%, and uh, crit damage against evil specifically is 50%. Um, on a cooldown of 5, his passive skills are Magic Resistance A, Writing A, 
Uh, his third skill is an anti-berserker attack damage aptitude, and his noble phantasm is the Juice Order. I said that completely wrong. Exempl exemplifying the king's heroics, O12 traveling swords hits 12 times. It's a quick NP. Deals damage to all enemies. Deals 100% plus 10% extra damage to enemies, which equals to the heroic king stacks, max 12. The MP damage at level 1 is 600%, and if you get him to MP5, it's 1000, and then he also reduces all enemies' quick resistance for 3 turns. I'm going to assume that this does not apply when he does it, because it doesn't say so. The quick resistance lowered is 20% at charge level 1, and at the final charge level, it's 40%, and that is Charlie main over here, or Charlie. Um, let me see, and also the buff that this eventually gets is that he... Increases the grant self attack on buff for five turns, and then he also gains some crit stars with it just to make it slightly better uh, And then this used to Okay, so grant self heroic king buff for five turns when critical attacking. Okay So he gets even more of that buff interesting Yeah, that's Charlemagne. Um there's not actually a whole buttload of quick AoE sabers on NA at the moment. I think it's literally just two. It is Lakshimba, and then it is uh, Summer Okita Altar. Those are your two options on NA. So if you want to have an actual... <laughs> he's also a limited servant. If you want to have an actual... If you need an AoE uh, quick saber, I think he ends up being a pretty solid choice for him. Uh, I think this skill is very interesting. The increased own generation rate and then being able to grant give yourself heroic king buff for five turns when taking attack is pretty interesting. Um, this also means that I think you just basically, because of the ceiling on NP, I think you just basically never use this when you are farm when you're no not when farming, that's not the right word for it. When you're looping, mainly because you're not gonna be taking any damage. Um Actually, no, you would want to kind of use that for 20% up MP. Well, you probably could do it with the new Summer Scotty coming out, because Summer Scotty will have an AoE on her stuff. So that means that you'd be able to probably take out the first the first group of enemies with Scotty. That means that you'd be able to use this, go there, seal your NP, or do something like that. Unless there's a way to remove the seal of the MP in something else. Or maybe you could also do that, obviously. Could you actually do this? I wouldn't... I'm pretty sure you could probably get rid of this. It doesn't say you can't get rid of it. So you can probably apply this, figure out a way to get rid of it, and then kind of go from there. But maybe it's some. Maybe I'm overthinking this. This just might be a thing of like everything else of him is pretty solidly built, so you don't even really need to use the skill. But you know, this is just something me trying to think something out because this is the first time I'm actually fully seeing his kit. An increase the demonic and divine enemies is pretty good. Uh, increasing your own attack is pretty good. And like I said, even the reason I think you actually probably don't even need the 20% MP generation rate is because he actually has um, a 30% charge to his MP, which is pretty good. Um, a lot of quick servants usually falter because they're not able to get... Either they don't have an MP charge or they don't have MP gain built into themselves. So they end up missing being able to loop by the next turn just by a little bit off so that's kind of annoying uh but he seems to be able to be built perfectly for that and again this is me just currently looking at him through the ability of looping and obviously he is not i don't think you're meant to actually use him for that <laughs> he seems like he would actually be way better in challenge quest type fights because the ability especially if you're fighting someone of the evil alignment or maybe you're using a new unit that it will be appearing pretty soon that i'm not going to say the name of because it is technically a spoiler but you know he's coming up with trom as well who can also turn people into evil enemies you could use him with that as well to make it so that uh you'll be able to do a buttload of crit damage on him uh, and also considering that this skill would be really good to just grant an ally invincibility for like two attacks three turns is pretty damn good um, And then he also gets he also buffs himself when he's doing this other thing and again in a situation where it is a uh, Challenge challenging type fight you can maybe deal with having your NP sealed for like a single turn It's not gonna be the worst thing in the world because you will in theory survive for the next turn You're not fiending to try to end it for three turns. You're actually trying to win the fight and do things like that And in that case, uh, I also say that again like I was saying beforehand his MP seems both perfectly suited for the thing I mentioned before, which is being able to loop, because it hits 12 times and it's quick, and the more hits on quick, the better it is for getting NP gain after you achieve overcharge. 
because that is basically how the MP gain kind of works on MPs, as far as I'm aware of on that anyway. That's why I'm always, I always know the more hits on something, the better, because the sooner that you can hit them into the overcharge and you can start hitting them into bonus damage, you'll be getting more MP through that. But, like I said previously, in Challenging Quest, it can still uh, work out for you because you'll also be building up this Heroic King stacks, and then once you hit 12, you'll be dealing a low... A, you should be dealing a lot of damage from what I understand from this. And then even if you're not for whatever reason, if you're on a team that's focused on quick, you're also going to be debuffing them so that they can take even more damage from them. And because he is quick, you're going to be you're going to be wanting crit, uh, crit stars and stuff like that, so you're going to be using quick cards, and then that it just all works. I think it works perfectly fine as it is. Obviously, they buffed him at some point, so you know he's just going to get better from how he is now, but the way that it is on NA, we have to judge him from how he is right now. I think, when does he get the strengthening? Let me see. Uh, Caldea Boys Collection 2024, so that is two years away. <laughs> Close to two years away. A, a year and a couple months away. Um, how far back is uh, uh, February? Not February, let's see. March, um, yeah, about a year and ten months till we get it, and that's also where you get his Newsy Boys, uh, costume dress, which is a fantastic chart costume dress. But yeah, that's Charlemagne. He seems pretty, uh, dang good to me. He's a very interesting unit, from what I can see. I actually wouldn't mind also getting him, even though I'm gonna be going for Krimhild. <laughs> even though my main focus is on Krimhild on this one. Uh, I wouldn't be too sad if I got him, because I could actually use an AoE quick saber, and I do plan to eventually get Ruler Scotty, so I could see some fun stuff going on there. And in general, with a lot of his kit, it just sounds like it'd be fun uh, to kind of mess around. Funny enough, I think a lot of my quick units are actually, ex for the ex with the exception of one unit, um, all my quick units are made, are kind of built for looping, and they're not really built for challenging quests. So it would kind of be nice to actually have a unit that would be kind of useful in a challenge quest type scenario <laughs> built up now that I do them a little bit more often now with my brother and stuff. Well, I almost fell out my chair. I'm fine. But anyway, that's Charlemagne. Um, and this banner will be coming up pretty soon. Now here's the question. Should you be summoning on this banner? Uh... That's a very good question. We have a lot of good stuff coming up, and thanks to a recent tweet, we now know that uh, the Fago 7th Anniversary will be on uh, July 6th, because that's when they're going to have their panel at Anime Expo. Um, I'm pretty sure this is at Anime Expo, right? Yeah, Anaplex America, Albert figure out another time. It might actually not be at Anime Expo. Anyway, uh, either way, it's in July. That's when it's going to be happening. So we have until July 6th. That's when Archetype Earth happens. And then once Archetype Earth releases, that's when Summer Flood comes out. And there's a buttload of units that will be prepared for that. There are also going to be a, there's also going to be a Tron banner next week after this one releases. Which is going to feature the new ruler unit that I'm not saying a na name of. Just because even though people have already said it in the comments of it. If you're off the off chance that you don't look in my comments... And you've avoided his name up until this point. Uh, I'm not going to spoil it for you too. Even though I think I've said it before in the past. Let's just assume. For whatever reason. I'm going to look out for you on this one. Um, keep that in mind. And then he also shows up with Don Quixote. Which I think Don Quixote is probably not the greatest unit in the world. But he's Don Quixote. So I, I want him for that reason. So there's going to be a lot of stuff to be summoning for. Um, you have to balance that in your head with the idea of like, okay, anniversary is also coming up and I have to prepare for that. And that's on July 6th. And you just don't got, you got uh, a month and a couple weeks. A month and like three weeks, maybe. Let me see. A month. It'll be the 10th. And then one, two, three. Yeah, okay. About a month and three weeks, almost two months to prepare for it and stuff like that. Uh, and also, if you're someone like me who you're summoning on this ban banner specifically for Krimhild, um, it might be better to actually just, like, wait. Because the problem here is that she shares a 50-50. This is something that really sucks with the ad added pity, is that they stopped doing banners where there was a solo focus on the four-star. So that means that on this banner, you have a 50-50 chance if you're going to get the featured four-star, it's going to be Krimhild or Roland. And it's 100% possible that you can get five Rolands in a roll and never get Krimhild. Um, it happened almost basically to me with Bargast and um, 
uh, Trico or Babo Sif. Um, where I was able to get Babo Sif, I think, to like MP4, and my Bargus is like at MP3, when I when I would have must much rather have preferred to get as much copies of Bargus if I could, <laughs> and stuff like that. But she is going to be featured, I think, on another banner in this year, which is going to be the Caldea Fairy Knight Cup. Let me see if she is um, solo focused on that. This is another, again, I guess also if you want to have a Roland focus, if you only care about Roland, he will have a banner with Charlemagne and Roland him only near the end of the year, which is going to be related to this one. Um, yeah, Krimhild is going to be featured on here with Brynhildr. Which is probably not as good as Charlie, so you know, it is what it is on that one. Let me see, is there another banner on here? Luckbag, the Wajin, the, the, the Wajin. Okay, Wajin might also be a pretty good place to look for more. I wouldn't mind summoning for the Australia girl. Um, Australia. Yeah, I'm 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 a go with girl. Well, just in case the, the the thing I was about to mention might have been a weird story spoiler of some kind. Uh, yeah. So there you go. That's Trom. That's gonna be coming up. Best of luck to you who are gonna be summoning. I've seen a bunch of people in the comments already ready for Charlie. Uh, I wish you guys the best of luck. We will have me and my brother should be doing a summon video for. You're gonna be summoning on Charlemagne, right? Boy. You don't know if you're gonna be. It's the next banner is your your big focus, right? Sorta, of, yeah. Okay, I'll at least have three multis to go for it because I want to try for Grimhild and stuff like that. So there will at least be a tiny thing for it there. But yeah, that's the end of the video, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Until next time, peace out. Goodbye. And where's the stop recording button? There it is.